public service announcement. I need all my Titan fans to come on down, grab you some popcorn, grab you a drink. Titans Coliseum in the building. Yeah, not, not, boy, I'm in the game. Still ballin', I'll never change. I be rapping my hometown for the whole city, really knew my name. Boss talk, I don't do favors. Yeah, we signing deals with the top players. We just started this lifestyle. We be having all kind of haters. I'm a mad man, they better come get me. Wanna botch me in, but I'm too shifty. If they come at me sideways, I'm a stiff army like Derrick Henry. Now listen, we're not the same. EA Sports, boy, I'm in the game. I be rapping my city, dog. Got a tight logo hanging on the chain. Big money, big moves. New stadium on the way. Nashville, we hold it down. We the one team that you don't wanna play. They be trying to talk down on us. I just laugh at them and I walk away. I don't tolerate disrespect. Might shoot the fade, pin it hard away. Big money, big moves. New stadium on the way. Nashville, we hold it down. We the one team that you don't wanna play. We be putting in the hard work, so we coming in without kind of skill. I be living in the end zone. My finger roll like Tony Hill. What's poppin'? Yes, sir. What's popping? Welcome to the Titans Coliseum podcast, man. You already know who I am. Yo, five stone. What's popping? Man, I'm good, man. Got another a special guest in here tonight. You got a bold prediction for us. So we definitely excited to hear this optimism and where it's coming from and see if we are going to be on the hype train with them or are we just going to hold off and push on the brakes a little bit. But, man, I'm excited for tonight, man. Man, look, man. Hey. We got family in the building tonight, man. He don't need no introduction, but <laughs> hey, we're gonna hook him up, man, because that's what we do around here, man. You can catch him on Cast into the King podcast, man. And uh man, like I said, he don't need no introduction, man. Y'all give it up for the milk man himself, Josh Milk. <laughs> yeah, Hello, glad, to be glad to be here, man. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir, man. We got to get to it, man, because you, whoo, you were rare for, man. <laughs> well, I'm finally growing my eyebrows back. I'm getting my face, a little bit of facial hair, a buzz coming back after two months off of chemo. So I can't help but feel, I mean, that's the one optimistic part I'm feeling about this. So, <laughs> man, you sure? Everything else is realistic, in my opinion. And You sure? And we'll, well, we going to talk we'll, about it, though. <laughs> we most definitely go get to it, man. But hey, before we do, man, shout out to everybody watching tonight, man. Shout out to CJ, Ford, Julie, Angelica, Steven, Lemetrius. Hey, man, everybody out there watching, man. Appreciate you. What's up with you, Johnny, man? Uh, thank y'all for watching tonight. Uh, y'all make sure y'all like, share, subscribe, tell a friend about us, blah, blah, blah. This that and third. This episode is being brought to you by LionsDenBeardCollection.com. Use the promo code Coliseum to get 25% off. And also head over to SunnySmilesCoffee.com. Premium freshly roasted coffee. Free shipping on all U.S. orders. Also, check out the Titans Coliseum website, TitansColiseum.com. Never miss a live show, press article, or breaking news. Make sure you tune in to this show and all our social media accounts to keep up with any future giveaways we got going on. Also, make sure you head over to that group on Facebook, man, the Two-Tone Militia, man. You know they're going to keep it funky with you all the way through and through, man. Two-Tone Militia over on Facebook, man. Good thoroughbred Titan fans, they hardcore, they passionate, they ain't finna put up with no foolishness, man. So make sure y'all give them a follow. And since my guy Romeo's ain't here to pop it, I'm gonna oh, pop it for him, man. Make sure y'all go download the intro to the Titan Coliseum podcast in the game by our dog Romeo. It's on all digital streaming platforms, and y'all. Listen, we cannot wait to drop this new intro on y'all. If y'all think that one was hard, hey, look, that's all I'm gonna say, man. That's all I'm gonna say. Just, just wait. It's coming. It's coming oh, yeah. soon, man. 
Oh yeah. And, and you can go ahead and join us on Patreon. Now we are on Patreon. So y'all come over there. You can get your tiers. There's different perks and exclusive offers that we're offering for each tier for y'all over there, whether you're tailgate in the game, or you want to become an exclu uh, executive producer, they're different tiers, got different perks, get free merch with some of the perks as well. Get shout outs on the show, uh, exclusive offers on when we do an events and all things, things like that. And then special giveaways will be exclusive just for our Patreon members as well, moving forward. So we'll have ones that's for everybody but then we'll have also giveaways that is just for our patreon members as well so make sure you go over to patreon and join us there as well Whew. okay a lot of that bills are paid so josh you man we was on the kim moore show we was talking about predictions going over everybody's you know can I, uh, can I just i want to say something about that kim moore show i don't okay. i don't know the name of that texan fan <laughs> i like I, it was one week in the regular season where the sick podcast had like the call in line. Yeah. If there was a call, I so badly wanted to do a call in like right then there. So I can talk some sense into that man. Oh my, <laughs> I was, I'm getting Sonic. I'm listening to this on the phone in the car and I'm like, what is he, what is he talking about? It, it was just oh baffling. It was he was like, we don't like that delusional talk. We don't keep it a hundred, this and that. And then proceeds in the same breath to be like, Legereus Sneed wasn't even the best corner on Kansas City. It's like, are you, what? hold on. Actually, what, what, that's what, what, factually what? false. Yes, that's fact, factually false. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I guess Marco I, didn't keep up with the electric bill. So. No, he had to step away with now. work. Yeah, had to step away from work. Uh, but now that we was talking on that, we was going over with schedules and, and re record predictions, and you was chiming in. You was letting us know that uh, you had a little prediction, and you said 12 and 5. So break that down for us. Let us know how, how you're feeling. And I hear I'll bring up your graphic as well that you brought as well to show them. Yeah. Why, why do you believe they can go 12 and 5? Let us in on some of this optimism. All right. So if you could put the camera back on me for a second, I'm going to bring up – I'm going to pull up my other camera see if you can get it. It does not like over here is a stomp towel music. See stomp towel towel. Just so folks can wonder how much of a fan I am of the Tennessee Titans. I got that towel back in 2008 when Lindell White famously stomped on that towel with Keith Bullock or was it Javon Kurz? I can't remember on the sideline. So I just want everyone to know that off right off the bat about Anyone question my fandom, especially the last two years, saying you're not a fan for predicting we we're going to miss the playoffs in 22 and last year, and especially with the records I said. I said in 22, we're going to go 8-8. Eight and eight. We went 79. For 2023, I said we're going to go 5-11. and 11. We actually went 6-1. and one. So I'm just one off compared to um, compared to those two years. And when we went to the number one seed, I said we're going to win 10 to 11 plus games. And we win, yeah, I think it was 11. Uh, how are games we won? I think it was 12 games and we got the number one seed. So just, just to put that in perspective when I talk about this, and you can go ahead and bring up the graphic uh, Firestone so, so we, can got, we got that out of the way now. So with this graphic week by week, just to have a little prefer, uh, a little history lesson from last year's games, one score games. How many one score okay. games we lost? It's about oh, yeah. seven to eight, yeah, for yeah. last year. So now you put that in perspective with the with the prediction that I have for 2024, week by week, and I'll read off these bulletin points right as I'm reading this. First point, and I listed here, all the games against the rookie quarterbacks. We are not losing. The first week is going to be Caleb Williams versus his first time seeing this new Denar Wilson defense. And you, be you best believe with Cheeto and Roger and Sneed, just those three alone covering the corners, I mean, covering the wide receivers and giving different looks to Caleb Williams. This could be the actual... This could be the actual lookings of what Jameis Winston almost went through when his with his first game against the Titans. I'm not saying his first throw is going to be a pick six. Now, that would be sweet if that was the case, but probably highly unlikely that's going to happen. And then you look at the other games versus rookie quarterbacks, the Patriots. Do we all really believe the Patriots are going to tuckle with us this year? No. By, by the time we play against the Minnesota Vikings, maybe, uh, yeah, 
maybe uh oh, sh- I'm forgetting. Yeah, Michigan quarterback McCarthy. Uh, yeah, McCarthy. Eight. Uh, JJ McCarthy. I have. Yeah, there's no. He doesn't strike fear in my heart. And even even if he's not playing, <laughs> we really gonna be worried about Sam Darnold losing to Sam Darnold as quarterback. <laughs> No, no, just no. <laughs> not really just that. Forget about you know that. how to tie roll, man. So if it was man, if it was like last man, year, I don't know. If it was last year's defense, I I got a question there. But this new defense under this new DC, no, I'm with you. We're not losing to Sam Darnold. There, there's just man, absolutely no. look, man. I'm not gonna put anything past this team, man. <laughs> I'm really not. But yeah, I want to get the core come in. Uh it's crazy how if any other team made the moves brand made they would say they are contenders yeah and i was just exactly. having to talk about exactly. that with a Texas that's my fan that's my early. thought process here yeah that's yeah, my I thought process talking. into this so, prediction hey. yeah man like i was saying i was having that talk with a texans fan earlier and i was just telling them like look i'm not really mad about people counting us out right now i mean we were six win team last season but the problem i have is there's been teams in the past that were coming off of worse seasons, made lesser moves, and got more praise. So, to mm-hmm. me, I feel like they are being subjective and selective with their praise. Yeah. I mean, you even saw what Jeffrey Simmons has said, too. One primetime game, week five, bye. What is it? Okay, that's how we're going to do it. Like, they constantly do this. And and I'm, I'm with y'all. The fan part of me was like, why y'all want to do this? But you got to kind of look and step back a little bit, like, all right, we haven't really been performing too well. We have been kind of the team that ain't been that interesting to watch under variable. Then the past two years have been really bad. So we got to kind of earn that spotlight back. If anything we learned from last season, from those Thursday night football games is teams usually don't <laughs> perform how we thought they was going to perform. And last year, Thursday night games was horrible. So they're trying to get better primetime games. And we just now have to earn it. And I think that we're finally going to earn it now. After this year, after we show we can be more exciting and more fun to watch, and they don't want to give us some more prime times games. All right, we, we got some we got some bigger issues to talk about here in NFL. They'll give us three prime time games, a Thursday night and two Monday nights. <laughs> hey, at least we're not playing the Jaguars on Thursday night. That tradition ended hey, years ago. Thank you. Man, I hated them days, man. Good God. It was like every year you just knew. We were playing the Jaguars on Thursday night, man. Do y'all remember the Thursday night game where we played the Jaguars and the quarterback was, uh, what's his name? Clipboard Jesus. And who was the quarterback White for the Jags then? Whitehurst. Wasn't it Blake Bortles? I think it was Bortles, yeah. Yeah, man. That was, oh, God, that was, that was awful. I don't want to relive that, though, man. Let's go ahead and keep this thing rock and rolling, man, because – I don't want to think about bad times right now. Uh, want to think about forward progression, man, and that's exactly what the Titans is doing, is progressing. Um, as y'all know, uh, volunteer OTAs, they started this week. Uh, they're going to be meeting with the media, what, tomorrow, I believe? And uh, one guy that, you know, I'm interested in seeing out there is the rookie, Trevondre. Uh, here we go. I'm not even going to try to say it. I'm still totally twisted about that. But I want to see Big Sweat, man. I want to see, you know, how how's he doing? You know, can he get through, you know, a full practice, even though it isn't padded? It's still going to be full practice. He's going to be running around doing everything that, you know, they require him to do in there uh, and all of that. But uh, five star. Who are you interested in seeing this week? Uh, Cedric Gray, really, honestly, because that's uh, that's the linebacker position we got the most questions about. I know Svet, Sweat's going to do good, but I also know there's a piece right next to him on the D, D line with Jeffrey Simmons that can penetrate. So it's just him learning from there. Cedric, we kind of need you to step up into a situation and become a green dot linebacker if we're wanting to run the, off, or the defense how we're wanting to run it. Um, so Cedric Gray, I just want to see how well he picks up this defense how well he understands it, how well he can possibly put everybody else into position, and if he can truly be what I expect him to be this year and and show out and ball out on this defense and replace Al Shire perfectly as we need. Megalo, who are you looking for out there? Uh, Sweat, I'm intrigued of looking forward to. Uh, uh, Firestone raises a great point with uh, 
with our linebackers. Who's going to be the green dot guy? It's not going to be Gibbons. It's not going to be Luke Gifford. Thank, thank, thank the Lord. So we can just <laughs> at least acknowledge that. So it's not going to be either one of those guys. Uh, that's something to look forward to. Right tackle. That's going to be my main focus. Is it going to be Nicholas Petit Friere? Is it going to be Dylan Radens? Is it going to be Charles who we picked up from the Commanders? That's going to be something I got my eye on. And that's one of the things, uh, one of three things into my prediction, actually, that like that holds, like that's like the biggest question mark to my prediction is that who's going to be our safety? Who's our right tackle? And does Will Levis make that next step? So that, so right tackle is going to be my main thing because we know JC is a behemoth of a man. We got Pierce Goronsky at the left guard. We have a cushion for Will Levis. We got Daniel Brunskill, uh, presumably coming back for right guard. And then, yeah, uh, best man up for a uh, right tackle. Or, 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 or there's a chance I saw an article today. Should the Titans sign the offensive tackle that the Green Bay Packers just let go, but he's dealt with injury issues. So, that, I mean, that's another possibility, obviously. And then the two folks of safety we keep keep getting linked to is Marcus May and Justin Simmons. Yeah. And I believe we're going to get one of those guys by the time training camp starts a la like Kenny Forcaro years ago when we signed him when he got cut from New Orleans around the preseason training camp time. Yeah, I wonder, is it, is it any more safe he's coming available after June the 1st? Yeah, I don't. I really don't see any, but also don't see the need getting any better either. I think that's what Simmons and May may might be holding out if somebody comes into training camp or something, maybe an injury and this this market jumps back up, but it's not really fluctuating any for them. It's it's pretty much stayed exactly where it's been since, you know, before draft for them. So I I think once OTAs and training camps go, they're going to get too eager to and their agents going to be like, Hey, you, you got to get in here. You got to start learning the system. We can't wait forever. So I, once those, uh, the training camp, cause OTAs didn't start it for us. Now, once training camp comes, I think what is the June, what I think it is what June 6th to the June 8th one, I believe is what it was. Once we get around that point, I think that's yeah. when be the latest point we see the safety sign. I, I don't see them signing. I seen them being signed before that point whether it's with us or somebody else, they just can't hold on too much longer. They got to get into a team. They got to get into the facility. They got to start training, got to get that playbook. They got to understand what's, what's going to happen. So they, they can't wait too much longer. Oh yeah, most definitely. Uh, but yeah, man, let's, let's talk a little bit of Will Levis, man, because I mean, truth be told, all eyes on him, man. And I feel like they centered this uh, all season around seeing if he's the guy and i feel like they've done enough to where a lot of the excuses can be eliminated mm -hmm. and uh Michael, i got a question for you um what does a good season for will levis look like a good season for will levis and i can straight up say this with a straight face a good season for will levis is getting us uh to I mean, guarantee a good season for him is getting us to eight wins at minimum. Uh, definitely, if we make the playoffs in whatever capacity that is, whether it be with 10 wins, nine wins, or in my case, 12 wins, uh, that's a guaranteed good season. Stat wise, a uh, good season uh, would be finally being a 4,000 yard passer for the Titans that never had one, I, and not to my knowledge. If uh, maybe Warren Moon, maybe back in the day but not off the top of my head. Uh, just, I mean, just, um, yeah. Will Levis cannot be the reason we lose games. Just like the majority of his stint was last year with there was like, there wasn't one game that you can point to and say, ah, if he didn't make that throw or, uh, if he, yeah, there wasn't that one game you can point to and say, he was the sole reason we lost. Like he didn't. He had. He doesn't have a Ryan Tannehill, Cincinnati Bengals moment last year. Like you can't. Like not that I. Not that I'm aware of. Like so. Like so. Solely lost the game. I mean, you. Someone. Someone can say to me, "I oh, threw the last INT versus the Steelers on the last play of the game," uh, to which I say. That could have been avoided had we not run it for three straight downs after we had a good kickoff return to the 50-yard line. 
That's neither here nor there. I already ranted about Vrabel with this Jaguar uh, compadre telling him like 30 for 30 style of what happened in Tennessee to which he thought we weren't giving the Derrick Henry the ball enough. And yeah, he had this whole consumption, I mean, assumption of what we were last year, which complete opposite, complete opposite compared to what, compared to what he thought. So public perception, but yeah, Will Levis, uh, Definitely going to be under limelight. Only the one primetime game. Funny enough, it's against Miami again. So uh, Jalen Ramsey, don't get your head uh, torn in half like last time. And Miami, don't uh, yeah, don't let him beat you again in the final three minutes. And, uh, oh, yeah, I wish I had a candle. I don't have a candle for prof. Uh, for the Miami game, that's, a, that's, my, that's one of my guaranteed wins for 2024. Why, you may ask, who's their new center? Their new center is a 265-pound Aaron Brewer, and yeah. who's lined up against him? Hopefully hopefully healthy. Hopefully healthy is a, tra a Traverius Sweat lined up against him with 100 extra pounds on him, and what did we see in Tampa Bay with Vita Vea versus Aaron Brewer? Man, Vita got Vea red, him up essentially and dropped him at Will Loves' feet and say, Hey, here's your hey, here's the doggy bone. Throw throw it again, and I'll catch it for you. So that's two is gonna be on his back for the most part, unfortunately. And they lost their right guard to the uh, Carolina Panthers in free agency. So that's two spots potentially for a hole in their offensive line this uh, upcoming season. Man, don't forget uh, Brewer. Man, he he's tougher than a two dollar steak. Man, I mean you train. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go without saying that right there, man. Come on, man. Put some respect He's, on that okay. man. But look, we saw, uh, and uh, maybe, but not everybody, but in the senior bowl, we saw Travondre Sweat going through and working centers, and they would put their feet down. They was tough. They'd bend, and then he'd bend them all the way to where their back was touching the back yeah. of their heels. So cool, all that. But this is power and man versus man. That that toughness, that heart you got in Aaron Brewer, guys. I'm not putting that against him, but. This physicality versus that physicality, he's just going to bend him backwards like a Circus Olay acrobat, and he's going to have his shoulder blades touching the heels of his feet, and then he's just going to reach out and touch to us. So that's that's my thing with Miami. I don't think they're going to be as good as they think this year because their O-line isn't going to be that good, and Tua doesn't perform well when pressure is in his face constantly. He he's not he's not that guy. That's when he goes back to throwing all those picks like he was a few years ago and everybody was worried. They got to have an O-line protecting them there, and I – I can see us winning that Miami game. The only thing is it feels like it's set up perfectly for them to finally have revenge, finally to shut this all down and be like, oh, that was just a fluke that they got against us. But we need and to go out there. To, to which I have, to, I have to push back on that for anyone that says we're going to lose in Miami. Oh, it's uh, perfectly for a revenge game. Okay, let's go back to that Monday night or last year. They had no major injuries coming into the game. Now, yes, they get lost Tyreek Hill like first or second quarter through, but he – eventually came back and when he made the place he needed to play, he was pretty spry for his injured self to do whatever he needed to do against our corners. They did not get hit with the injury bug until they played against the Ravens. They were a healthy, they were a healthy scratch. They were a healthy team going into that Monday night game. Oh, it's December. I looked it up. It was 60 degrees, 60 yeah. degrees in December. You cannot tell me with a straight face that no one would want like that's, that's San Diego weather in the winter, 60 degrees in December. So weather was not an issue temperature-wise. The Dolphins were, were very healthy, and the Titans just kept shooting themselves in the foot. That's the reason they got up big with the toss play from Derrick Henry that he botched, the botched uh, screen pass play that went for a pick six, the muffed punt from the – from uh, I forget his name. I hope he's not on our team anymore. I know the special teams coordinator is not on our team anymore. But the muff punt, we've seen so much of that last year. That's hopefully eradicated and gone. Just those three plays alone, like gave him it, like minimum 17 points, 17 points. And we came back still with three minutes left to score 14 points on them. And yeah, they were health. They were healthy that game. And look what that's like to your to your point, Mr. Taylor. What happened this off season? They downgraded at center essentially because they couldn't afford him, I and mean, they couldn't afford their last guy. They lost their last guy to I mean, their right to guard to the Panthers, which I 
uh, take that what you will, that big contract for a right guard. I mean, hey, the Panthers be- desperately need him, I guess. Uh, yeah, and then you look at our defense. Head over heels, much better in the secondary. And I've, I don't know if it was with you guys or over <laughs> A to Z uh, when I was doing some revisionist history, watching some of the old like Monday – shows after the game where someone's where someone chatted in saying how long is it going to take for this front office to fix our secondary in the off season and wouldn't you believe it we might have just solved it in just one off season yeah we just might have just solved it in one off season now imagine those three corners again this is all preface if they're healthy if they're healthy going into the game if they're not healthy it's a whole different story but healthy healthy going into that game you cannot tell me tip for tat that this secondary isn't going to put a lick on those wide receivers on the line of scrimmage. You can't convince me otherwise. I feel like they can, but my concern, and before I get to my concern, man, shout out to Jason Holmes, man. Y'all head over to Facebook and join the AFC South Battleground group, man. Hey. I ain't going to hold y'all. It is a lot of salty. I don't even want to say their name, man. But there's a lot of salty fans in there that aren't Titan fans. But, hey, Jason, he ain't with the foolishness. He going to always hold it down for us, man. So y'all make sure to get him a follow over on Facebook. But like I was saying, man, uh, I just got to keep it real, man. Uh, We going to be attacking defense. and you know, it's a high risk, high reward type of defense because if our defense can get home, we gonna cause the we gonna cause teams a lot of problems. But here goes the thing: the big risk. If we are getting home, those quarterbacks not gonna be able to hold up forever, and we're going to be susceptible to getting beat. So I mean. You got you got to understand what you uh face with when you uh have these attacking defenses. Okay, but now remember though, Legarius Need locks down Tyree Hill, so right. we ain't got to worry about Tyree Sneed. Just just follow him. You just go with him. Whatever side he's on, you're on. You're with him. If we're blitzing, we're attacking. You're man. And if we're not, we're in a zone. Then you run that zone. You run it. But if we're attacking, then hey, Sneed has to play man, and he's staying on Tyreek the whole damn time. Now, Cheetah Bay, all you got to do is hey, Cheeto, handle Waddle, handle Waddle. McCurry has to handle OBJ. You can you can do that, bro. Just make sure every throw is going to have to be Cheeto on OBJ. That's just my opinion. I put Cheeto on OB, on uh, Odell Beckham in my opinion. Yeah. I, I, that's, just That's just me. That's just me. Odell is younger or older, so he's not as fast. As he's taller Roger. than Roger. He's taller than Roger. All of them are, though. All of them are, bro. You, they're all about the same height. So regardless, Roger's in that situation. So, And there's a lot of times where Odell takes plays off now, especially during the regular season. He's trying to make sure he's still good there for the postseason. So there's a lot of times in regular season that Odell it ain't going out there as hard as Waddle is, who's out there trying to compete, show that he's the best wide receiver on that against Tyreek Hill as well. I want Cheetah trying to keep up – or Cheetah Bag trying to keep up with, with Waddle – out there and running around with him rather than Roger because Roger's shorter and I don't think Roger has the same speed that Cheetah Bay has. All right, so I'm just looking at this right now. He's a tall 5'11", if I'm to believe this Google search from Odell <laughs> Beckham Jr. That's a tall – I'm 5'11". That the, yeah. that has to be – this can't be true right here. Yeah. And I mean, I'm just Warner. doing a quick Google search. So I guess, yeah, Roger, yeah. You're 5'11", too, so go ahead. Guard uh, Odell Beckham. That's a that's a tall five eleven. He seems like a six three, six two guy. Yeah, no, no, definitely not. Uh, I, I was thinking six six one at most. Yeah, yeah man, I mean, if it's one dude in his secondary, I'm concerned about it. It is Cheetah Bay. I'm not gonna lie because, I mean, as good and solid as he may be, man ain't getting no younger, bro. So I mean. Are we getting this man, you know, on, you know, the good, the good side of his career still? Or are we getting the Jonathan Joseph situation to where his best days are, you know, beyond him? 
is going to come out there and he's going to be the weak link. That's where I trust Brian Callahan because one thing Brian has said in multiple press conferences is the thing that I hate most or what I look for in a defense is what I hate most as an offense is when defenses do this. And if that defense does it, then I want them to be a part of my defense over here. It's one of the reasons why he got Denard because he knows what the Baltimore Ravens defense did made was nightmares for offenses week in and week out. This is a guy that came from his former team. He had to run his offense practice against this guy all the time in defense. So if he was in the ladder starting to climb down, I really don't think Brian would have brought him here on the contract that he had. Uh, so I, I, I believe in him. I, I know that he is getting older. I do think we have some time with him, but I don't think he's already on that back nine where we, we got to be too worried. I think Brian would have – how we've handled this offseason, they definitely would have went and got somebody else if Brian had that as a concern for him. Hey, Milko, you might got a twin brother out, out here, man. Mm -hmm. uh, you might want to check with Glenn lots of eyes, man, because – I mean, I ain't going to lie, man. <laughs> man saying something now, man. <laughs> well, I look like John Robinson when I have a full head of hair, and then I look like Stockton <laughs> when I'm completely bald with the headband. Uh, oh, they, they, they keep having these, these comparisons for you. Oh, my God. The man of a million lookalikes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, by the way, Jonathan Joseph, he barely he lasted with us no more than two games. That was a quick I think it was, that man. Was a, I ain't gonna lie. After after that uh Vikings game, man, I checked out because I mean that man right there, he was just he was getting done all kinds of ways, but the right way. No, did he? <laughs> Man, well, however you want to say it, man. Yeah, all I know, he was getting tossed about that. He was tossing a lot of <laughs> man. That was, that, that was horrible, man. I mean, I, 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 I can vividly see that man getting beat by Justin Jefferson. <laughs> Justin Jefferson, the whole seven yards ahead of this man. He, he started trying to run. He couldn't do anything if he gets him, man. Bad, almost as bad as watching Christian Fulton get ran over, catch a P.I. on himself, and give up the touchdown pass at the same damn time. How many times did I see that Christian Fulton? I'm glad. Man, I'm, so I'm glad, glad I didn't see that Eagles. I'm glad I didn't see that Eagles game like that, man. I saw Traylon catch the ball in the end zone when he got, you know, the concussion or whatever, man, but. I'm so glad I didn't see that Fulton foolishness or whatever, man, because that right there, if I had seen that, man, I probably would have acted a fool in public that day. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. So how much, because Josh, you got 12 and 5 on this. How much of, like, Will Levis is that 12 and 5 record reliant on, or how much of that 12 and 5 record is that reliant on Will Levis actually doing good or just the offense operating? Like, is it? Will Levis has to come out and be like generational talent for sure, franchise guy, or just a QB that doesn't lose the games? Well, uh, for one of my points, I actually have on here uh, specifically games where he could possibly light it up and just have a mon like a qu quote unquote good day, like fantasy wise, like a good day in fantasy terms. So that could be 300 yards, 400 yards, whatever you want to uh, put there, at least over 300 yards passing and multiple touchdowns thrown against. The Bears week one because there's no tape on this new offense for starters. Uh, there's no – I mean, yeah, and then it, even though it will be no loss, it will be versus the Packers. Uh, the Miami game, uh, the uh, first matchup I say against the Colts when we were coming off that bye, uh, definitely against the Patriots, against the Sus defense. Uh, I, 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 for some reason, I just feel like the Vikings are a gettable game for, for that against that defense. And then, uh, I mean, there's a whole bunch of more, but I don't want to get more, too convoluted with it, but it does include the last two games versus the Jaguars and Texans, where I think the offense is going to be full throttle pedal to the metal kind of deal when we're trying to close out for a division and trying to see who wins it last week versus the Houston Texans, where I say in my prediction with the Texans is that that last week will be flexed into a Sunday nighter, and both of us are going to be 11 and five. Who's going to win the division and who's going to win the uh, pl home playoff game? And 
I think we're going to win that game, especially with it being at home. So you imagine, you imagine how that's going to be a playoff atmosphere. If it gets to 11 and five, Will Levis has turned out to be good to really good on the year. This like excitement that we haven't felt since we were the one seed team versus the Bengals. That's going to be one heck of a atmosphere to be in. But in terms of Will Levis, like solely winning, I think on the year, it's going to be a combination of like, he's going to take that next step. Again, this is just what I believe and what we saw with a putrid support cast of offensive linemen and wide receivers. And then you put two and two together. Of He did well with bad as much as he could compared to a better O-line and a better receiving core. You like, it's, How can you do worse with better? That's what I want to know. How can you do worse with a better receiving court and a better offensive line? Unless he's just turned the ball over uh, Brett Favre style or Jake Lock, God forbid, Jake Locker style. Like like that only situation where he could perform poorly is if he's throw is if he's throwing the ball and doing multiple interceptions. But I think this year it's going to be a combination of him taking that next step, but him doing. Not the minimum of what Vrabel asked him to do last year, but all but having a con- contribution to where he does at least a touchdown throw a game, multiple uh, touchdowns throwing a game, and then the running game gets in a play, gets into play. The defense makes a few stops. Like it's going to be a combination of everything. It's it's not going to be it's not going to be a year where the offense is just lights out 50 touchdowns throw like Tom Brady 2007 style. And our defense sucks. Our running game. Sucks. It's not going to be one. It's not going to be a new Orleans saints year where, you know, the offense is going to be great, but there's something on the defense is holding them back from the playoffs. It's not going to be one of those years. It's going to be a collective of everything on the squad. That's going to be clicking in my opinion. And again, it comes down to those two positions, right? Tackle and free safety. That's my only two cons- That's the only two questions I got. No, and yeah. they brought this up in chat too, but this is good too to think about like where we're not thinking that the offense might score a lot or be a high flying offense. That hip drop yeah, tackle we does 17 points play. a game. Exactly. We average 17 points a game. Right. So that mm-hmm. hip drop tackle does come into play this year where hey, we might get a bunch of 15 yarders now for bad tackling, or some people do be able to get through splits and get through holes because people are afraid of hip drop tackle penalty. So you could see the offenses start to score a little bit more this year when it comes to those situations if a lot of defenders have that in the back of their mind. So we we could finally see a 30-point game from a Titans uh game, man. We finally might be able to see that again. Man, look, man, it, it's gonna look crazy when it happens, man. Because good God, man, it it was like all last year we had I don't know how many times I felt like we got to third base and just you know flamed out. Could never get to the, yeah. those 30 points, like those 30 points would have meant something, but I mean or at just you know at least 24. We right. have- we averaged 17 points. No, I want to say we averaged 16 points last year. One less point than 2022 in Todd Downey, which is hard to believe. So if you if you give the av- – like say you say Tennessee averages 23 points a game uh, from last year. That is six added wins to last year's total. And we finished 6 and 11. Is that right? Yeah, 6 and 11. We finished 6 and 11 last year. That's six more wins for you, and you're at 12 and five right there. If you average 24 points, so you don't necessarily have to. It'd be awesome if we scored 30 points a game. I can't wait for the day to hopefully happen this year. But for for the defense we got, if we average 23, 24 points a game, that is six added wins. That's six more wins. I mean, so, I'm just I'm just doing the logical math in my head where there is, I cannot see. In the multiverse, different dimensions, whatever we're doing with Marvel, I cannot see in a world, in our reality, where we have a new offensive mind to head coach. We have all these receivers. We have a better offensive line, and we're still averaging 17 points a game. I can't see that. I can't see that. That's, That's lunacy, in my opinion. 
So, John, let me ask you about this, man, because Jonathan did uh, bring this to me earlier. Um, how do you feel about the odds makers uh, literally having us losing every game this season, with the exception of the Vikings and the Patriots game, which would have us at, what, 2 and 15? I mean, I've been seeing all kinds of people in the national media, haters in our division, haters outside of our division. They got this whole thing where they think Will Levis is going to flame out and we're going to be drafting a quarterback in the top three to five uh, in 2025, man. But how do you feel about that, man? Uh, I say whatever bet you can find for the over-under that I think was still pegged at six or five, take the over. Just quickly take the over right now. <laughs> so if that's still available, go ahead. And the Commanders, uh, my, one of my friends is a Commanders fan. Uh, we do not like the commies. We beat the commies in the Cold War. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, irony right there. They're in D.C. and their short name's commies. Anyways, they draft Jay and Daniels, and they got pegged an extra two wins for an over-under, I believe, at eight or nine. That, unless I am missing something, the commanders didn't do that much in the offseason. They just got a whole bunch of ragtags from the Dallas Cowboys from uh, Dan Qu for Dan Quinn. And how did they do when playoff time came? Don't remind Cowboy fans how that went. Packer fans will rejoice when they hear the noises, the tunes of that song. Uh, for the for the odds makers, I mean, a few days ago, I did this. Uh, I did this episode with a Jaguars fan on uh, that has a different YouTube channel, and he essentially and I essentially posed this question to him after I explained everything, uh, thirty for thirty style with ESPN, like ESPN style. Like, here's what happened with Mike Vrabel behind the scenes, leading up to the twenty three three, why he got fired, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We know the story. I posed the question to him about the record. If you put a prime Philip Rivers that, like, say, 2012 prime Philip Rivers, which was really good that year, on this 2024 Titans squad, what's what's your perception of the team? How do you think the team's going to? He said, yeah, this is a 10-plus win team and contention for the playoffs and contention for the AFC. Now, that is because... I mean, just based off that reaction, it, it sends a signal that no one trusts and will loves, and they will say, and most of them out there are just box office warriors. Let's just call it what it is. They're box office warriors because the common song that you will hear the media sing is he had a great four touchdown game to start out the year, and then he had two or three. I mean, they had like four touchdowns, whatever the stat is for the rest of the way to close out the year. After that one game of four touchdowns, he does four the rest of the way. If you know the Titans and you know the tendencies with how we want to play our quarterback, and we had Derrick Henry last year, and all we wanted to do was just run, 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 run on every freaking first down and Man, every predictable third down play or every predictable down that we were supposed to pass. I mean, yeah, the quarterback wasn't set up to succeed, in my opinion. And that's, I think this year it's going to be a bit like, I don't wish ill will on anyone personally because we're all human and I love my brothers and sisters in Christ and I love my brothers and sisters from other mothers. So I say that to say, I don't wish ill will on Vrabel, but I think when we see Will Levis put up the numbers of a respectable starter to a really good to upwards to a really good starter, People are going to do double takes with Mike Vrabel and say, why didn't you make that work? Why didn't you make that work in his rookie season? That's going to, it's going to make these media pundits hopefully do their research and go back and say, Hey, you had him and look what he's doing with, I mean, again, they don't purport on our offense because they think we're going to get one of the top picks in the NFL draft. We can't possibly have, a top pick if we don't have a good offense and good receivers. And when they see Will Levis do what I think he's going to do this year, they're going to do a double take with Vrabel before he gets a head coaching job and say, Hey, what's your, what's your deal on offense? Like what's with your offensive mentality? Like, why couldn't you make it work? And we'll, 
And I think, and I think the owners know based on interactions with Amy Adams and Rand Carthon of what happened behind the scenes with, with, with that episode last year, but with Will Levis, he's going to, he's going to be really good. He cannot like, again, logically he did good with bad around him. He cannot do bad with good around him. Not, I, I can't put two and two together logically as a fan. I just can't. So, so Josh, uh, yeah. Man, uh, yeah, Josh, uh, I'm glad you brought up the point about running the ball so much on first down, man. It, hey, if y'all haven't checked out that interview Brian Callahan had on the Athletics uh, YouTube page, yeah. y'all check that mug out, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, a lot of great information. And he talked about uh, his time in Cincinnati, and um, he had mentioned, you know, uh, situations to where, you know, they was looking very tightish. They was run, run, passing on third down a lot. And uh, Joe Burrow, he said something. He said something to the coaches about it, like, "Hey, like, you asked me to go out here and throw the ball on obvious downs or whatnot. I mean, it, it's not gonna work out. Let me throw the ball more on first and second down." They started doing that, and that's when the offense started to uh progress and i see a lot of that that could go on in tennessee man because one thing that they emphasize a lot is these players have got to be straight up with them these players cannot be afraid to say what they like what they don't like and like i said in that interview uh brian callahan talked about it he talked about you know times where you know, the wide receivers was coming to them, telling them, like, hey, this route is working against this team, man. Dial it up again. And they would just continuously dial it play up. As opposed to here, where it's been said by Will Levis himself, feels like he's, you know, just playing, playing within yeah. the system. Right off, yeah. Yeah, playing within the system, you know, just doing whatever, you know, the system tells him to do as opposed to, you know, playing his game. Yeah. And <clears throat> you heard Brian talk about like, you, we want to find out what they like. So that way when we go call plays, we can call plays that they like in moments rather than we, okay, we think this play is going to work on a third and 15 or, a, you know, a fourth and two. What do you feel comfortable running at a third and 15 and fourth and two that you're going to think work? And we can come together and be like, okay, you feel comfortable with this. I feel this work. We've got a common goal of that. And we've seen that. So many times I, I hear people complain about it. It's like, hey, well, why why do you want to do that? Just run what you want to do. Run your offense. The coach don't need to say this, that. We've seen how many times players come to the sideline. Nick Foles, hey, you want to run Philly special? Hey, Patrick Holmes comes to the side. Hey, you want to run corn dog real quick? They ask these guys. They talk to these guys so you can know. And that's some of the best coaching that happens is when you know what your quarterback likes to run. And if your quarterback knows what the offense altogether likes to run, that's why you have those conversations because the the – QB is so in tune with the team. He knows what routes the wide receivers like to run. They know he knows what blocking schemes the O line likes to block with, and what sets them up. So he can tell you, like, all right, hey, yeah, let's run this. I, I really feel like in this moment the team can do this. And I think Brian and Will can have that camaraderie. They seem to do so well. They talk well. Brian's willing to listen from so many people we've had talked to, and even when we had Colton Dow on here, he talked about how Brian and the coaching staff that he has around there are such good educators. They don't just educate know what they're talking about. They make you actually be interested in what they're talking about. So it, it can't go anywhere but up. We're going to know this year if Will Levis is the guy or not, and I believe he can be because everybody was out on him on college, but I saw that if you work with this guy, if you got the right coaching staff around them, this guy can develop into a damn QB, good QB for, for the NFL. I just didn't at the time want us to do it because I thought we was trying to win a damn Super Bowl or, you know, go playoff contender in two years under Derrick Henry and D-Hop, and that wasn't the case. So we, we got him. He can still be sculpted into the QB that we needed or that we need. We just got to have the right coaching staff around him, and I feel like we do have that right coaching staff around him. He's powerful. He has touch. He has that it factor. He has that dog in him. He has that grit in him. Everything you want from a QB, he's a leader. Even when draft picks was coming, hey, I need their number so I can call them. Welcome to the so welcome to the team. Signing free agencies. Hey, can you can you send me over Calvin Ridley's number? I want to let them know. Welcome to the team. This and that. Those are the things we needed and haven't haven't really seen from a QB in a very very long time, if ever. Especially with how the game has evolved now. So 
I, I'm sold in on Will Levis this year. I'm not sold like, oh, he's going to be the next face of the front of the NFL or anything, but I am sold on that. This is the guy we got to put everything all in on, figure out if it's him. And now we know that if it ain't Will Levis, we still got pieces around that we can bring a young QB into and fix around, which I don't think that's going to be the case. But we've said that many times, like we can't bring in no young QB anyway. We're going to slaughter them behind this O-line. They got no talent to throw to. Well, all those are gone. So I believe Will, Les- Will Levis will be able to succeed and and to lead this Titans team to back to victory where we're supposed to be head of the AFC South, winning winning records. I don't, I don't see us having no more losing records now. It just can't be. We got too much talent on this team to go out there and have a losing record now. It's it's just it's just not possible to, in, in my opinion. And see, here's where I'm conflicted at, man, because like I said earlier, man, I feel like they building this team up to where there's no excuses for Will Levis. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I kind of feel like we putting too much on this man in one season. I mean, I and I get where people are coming from. Like, we surrounded you with all of this. We should see some progression. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, the expectations may be too high. I mean, a good season, in my opinion, for Will Levis, don't turn the ball over. I'm not big into stats, but don't turn the ball over as much. Also, be smart with the football. I want to see you throw the ball away more when you have nothing. I want to yeah. see you taking yeah. your check down whenever you need to take the check down. I want to see you live to see another play. Those are the things that I'm looking for. I'm not looking for 4,000 yards. I'm not looking for uh 30 touchdowns to – three interceptions or any of that foolishness. No, just just show me that you're growing as a quarterback because if you give me minimum turnovers, if you play a smart football, guess what? Those stats are going to be there. People are going to see it when you cut on the field. They're going to see a guy out there that's willing his team to W's on a consistent basis if you just – Play smart. Yeah, and and to build on that, like you're saying, for me, like last year was what eight touchdown, four interceptions. So that's a one to two ratio. This year, I want to see a one to four ratio. That that's what I want to see when it comes to touchdowns to interceptions. At bare minimum, I want to see a one for four. That that'll show me that right, you're getting you're taking better care of the ball. And then other things, like you said, outside of stats, because so many people do have so much real, real uh, unreal expectation. Oh, if we don't go to the playoffs, he got to be done. Nah, that's unrealistic. If he don't throw over 4,000, nah, we want him to throw. But there are some guys out there, if he don't throw for over 4,000, he has to get off the team. It's like, that's that's not the case. Yeah, didn't Sam Howell throw for 4,000 yards last year? Exactly. Yeah. That was thrown right. up on the radio today, man. Look at all them yards. He threw for it. Now he's in Seattle. And the same throw is of Shannon Sharp. And a whole bunch of empty calories. That's all that is. It's a whole bunch of empty calories. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, I, and I and I understand it. Like you know, like I said earlier, we done surrounded this man with enough to where he could go out there and have a legitimate shot of doing his job. But you got to be realistic too. I mean, yes. no one knows how these games are going to play out because just just because you know Brian Callahan is, you know, pass first guy, you know, likes to work a lot out the shotgun. He showed you in Cincinnati that if need be, he can adjust. And they're going to call the game based on what the defenses are giving them. They're going to call the game based on, you know, what their players are doing the best. So they're not going to shy away from the run like that. No, and see, that that's the thing, too. The biggest thing for me this year for Will Levis is I want to see that you go out there and have command of that team. We seen it last year. We did. When when Tannehill was on that field, that offense played a certain way, players played a certain way. Once Will Levis came on that field, it seemed like a lot of players had that extra oomph in, they, in, in there and had a little fire underneath their ass. You can tell when certain guys come in, certain players just play harder. I still want to see that. I don't want to – if at any point in time in the season – 
if I see the guys on the field start losing that, that lets us know that Will Will isn't that guy. I don't see that happening, but that's one of the things I'm be looking for. How you handle this team, how you break out of huddles, and how everybody's listening to you when mistakes are made. How are you handling them and maturing from last year? How you handle them? I just want to see you have control over the team, and everybody still wants to serve and fight underneath you. We saw Vrabel start losing that. We've seen other QBs lose that throughout the season, and that's ultimately when they start looking for other QBs. I don't see that being for Will Levis, but that's one of the me metrics for me this year is seeing how you handle that team and how that team plays for you when you're on the field. Thanks, man. One thing about Will Levis, man, uh, and I hate to say it like this, man, but if that guy flames out, it's going to be because he's just out there, you know what I'm saying, just gunslingering it, uh, just, you know, out there playing, you know, hero James ball. Is yeah, he out there playing hero ball to a fault, man. Because here's my thing about Will Levis, man. And and I love this in him. This guy is one confident. Let's just get that. Go clear. ahead. Only one Jameis Winston. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right now. Stop that. But, but yeah, man, what I was saying, though, man, is Will Levis is a highly confident guy, man. I mean, yeah. he really believes that he's the best guy on the field when he steps out there. He really believes that he's, you know, the leader of this team. I mean, you can see it by the way he carries himself, just like Firestone said earlier, uh, when new guys come into town, you know, he's amongst the first ones, hitting them up, welcoming them to Tennessee, you know, getting in the building with them. I mean, doing everything that you want your quarterback to do. But, like I said, man, if he flames out, it's going to be because of hero ball, in which I feel like that can be coached out of him because you kind of saw some of that last season to where, you know, they told him to kind of, you know, tone it down a little bit. And you've seen a little bit of him trying to tone it down. But when you get in those situations, especially with a coach like, Mike Brable, I mean, you going to go back to your bread and butter because his bread and butter, his bread and butter is mold. I, I think there'll be less of that this year because I think last year wasn't only like, hey, I'm a rookie learning this. It was also a guy that started off the year third stringer trying to earn a starting role. So sometimes I'm trying to make something on this field that, that makes the coach not forget me, that makes the coach think that I need to be put in. So there's a lot of times to fault that you're trying to do too much to try to earn that good grace from Vrabel so you can get that starting role. And that was some fault too, but I don't see him doing that because he knows this year, hey, this team's mine. This is literally mine to lose. Like they're not going to bench me at some point. Excuse me. They're not going to bench me at some point. They don't think somebody else is better than me. I, I'm the guy unless I honestly start like literally, unless you come out here, literally start throwing like Jameis Winston out here, you're flat back and just chunking balls and throwing pass plays. We ain't got no sense in doing there's no reason for you to lose a starting job this year. So you just got to go out there, play, do what you're supposed to do, execute the these plays how they're supposed to be, and not put the ball in harm's way, and you're going to be completely fine. Facts, facts, facts. Fellas, y'all ready to rip the, wrap this thing up for the night? Yep. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Dude, they going wild in the comments, yeah, too. Yeah, man. I ain't, <laughs> I, ain't even, I ain't even for the acknowledge the foolishness. But I, 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 I am going to acknowledge is <laughs> – our fellow Titans fans holding it down like they yes. always do, man. We appreciate y'all so much. Five Stone, I ain't gonna lie, my voice kind of cracking right now because I'm still under the weather. Go ahead and take us on up out here. Yes, sir. This, uh, this episode is brought to you by LionsDenBeerCollection.com. Trying to get your beard in a tip-top shape. Get the luxurious products over there at LionsDenBeerCollection.com. Use promo code Coliseum and get 25% off your order. As well as this episode is brought to you by Premium Freshly Roasted Coffee, SunnySmilesCoffee.com. Free shipping on all U.S. orders. So head over to SunnySmilesCoffee.com today and get yours. Uh, as well as check out the TitansColiseum.com website. We got free merch there, articles, press articles, uh, blogs. You can catch every episode there. Whether you want to check it out on video or audio podcasts, you can catch it all there. And with merch there, we'll have some new merch coming out as well. So y'all go grab the Let Rain Cook shirts. But... We do got something new cooking up for y'all that's coming out as well. Uh, 
Yes. <laughs> Y'all, if you're on Facebook, and if you're not on Facebook, get over there to Facebook. Join the community group over there for Two Tone Militia. They have a good Titans community over there. None of that foolishness. Just talk some good footballs, a little bit of trash talk, but it's all good and sense of love of football. So make sure y'all go to Two Tone Militia over there on Facebook as well. Go download in the game. Romo's RJ has been out here busting, putting out these music. He has something special coming for y'all in the background, too. Every time we play this intro, y'all love it. Y'all support it. Y'all talking about, man, I, I just I need to hear that chicken head beat when it comes up. So y'all make sure y'all go whatever streaming platform y'all use to go get y'all's music. Go to in, uh, go and get in the game by Romel, support that, and be on the lookout because he got some fire stuff coming in the future, too. I can't I can't really tell y'all about it, but he got some fire stuff coming in the future. Y'all definitely going to want to want to hear and check out. And Last thing, make sure that y'all join us on Patreon. Like I said, we're going to have exclusive offers over there for y'all on Patreon. There's three different tiers that y'all can be and be a part of with a special exclusive perks that nobody else is getting anywhere. And like I said, we will have exclusive giveaways just for Patreon members in the future as well. So make sure you get on that Patreon list, whether tailgate in the game or an ex executive producer. Whew. Yeah, man, that's, you paid them bills, man. I, I appreciate you. I ain't going to lie. I couldn't, I couldn't have paid him anymore, man. Shoot, man. I'm, I'm ready to get over this sickness, man, man. Between what? Cicadas and allergies, man. I mean, I've been going through and moving and that. I've been going yeah. through it these last few days. Yes, yes. But, hey, man, Joshua, before we get out of here, too, make sure you you tell them where they can find you, you uh, what you got going on. This is this is your plug central. Let, let them know. All right, so you can find me on YouTube at Kick It to the King Productions, my podcast slash show, Cast It to the King. Just recently did the episode with a fellow Jaguars fan from First Class Media. And this upcoming week, we are going to be doing an episode with two other guests where we are going to be talking about spoiler reaction to the X-Men 97 show, which just wrapped up last week and a killer of a finale but I cannot stand cliffhangers. I know just stop it with the cliffhangers. It, yeah. Yeah. Great season. Great time. Great time to be reminded of the nineties again. What a great show for Marvel studios to finally get something good right back on track. Just in time for Deadpool and Wolverine, which tickets are out now, by the way, that you can grab to your local theater, which I have just pre-ordered my ticket. So be sure you do that as well. So you can find me on YouTube and at X. You can also find me at the same at Kick It to the King on Instagram and Facebook if you want to see what's going on in my daily life. Yeah, man. Ain't nobody thinking about Siskel and Ebert or whoever their name is, man. Whenever I need to know anything about sports, movies, TV shows, I'm hitting my milk man up, man, because he going to always keep it funky. He going to always give you, you know, the real when it comes to entertainment, man. And once again, man, I really appreciate you joining us tonight. I appreciate everybody that's tuned in. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, tell a friend about us, blah, blah, blah. This, that, and the third, we are nothing without y'all man because y'all turn us up if y'all ain't turning us up we ain't gonna be able to turn up but hey man everybody enjoy their week stay blessed we'll see you friday Time